Tobey Maguire might have learned to throw a punch for his Spider-Man movies, but how did he learn to boogie? What's the story with Maguire's supposed back injury before filming Spider-Man 2? This is Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man fitness journey. Tobey Maguire went through a nearly unbelievable amount of training to portray Spider-Man, but he didn't join the production without any fighting and fitness experience whatsoever. After production had wrapped, Maguire spoke with Howard Stern about how he became a part of the first Spider-Man film. According to Maguire, director Sam Raimi wanted him for the lead role from the very beginning, but the executives at Sony needed a little bit more persuading before they would believe that he could convincingly play the wall crawler. Even after sending in an audition tape, there were some doubts about whether or not he was athletic enough, or if he would believably be able to fight off New York's bad guys like a flesh-and-blood superhero. They saw the tape and they said, well, we know he can act, we want to see him do an action scene. Amid those doubts from executives, Sam Raimi stepped in to help McGuire secure the role. For the sake of demonstrating his capabilities, the two of them filmed a short video that featured McGuire performing some general fighting moves and taking out some anonymous villains while wearing a blue unitard. McGuire wanted to show not only that he could handle some intense fight scenes, but also that his body was convincingly muscular. He wasn't too far away from looking the part already, so he pulled the unitard down around his waist to show off the muscles he already had. The tape did the trick, and shortly after sending it in, Maguire was finally approved to join the project and start his superhero training. Tobey Maguire might have come into Spider-Man with some fighting capabilities and some muscle definition, but that didn't exclude him from the task of going through a grueling amount of training. Maguire said that prior to filming the first Spider-Man movie, he spent five months training six days a week to get into shape. Every day, Maguire worked out for four hours, lifting weights and training his body to move like someone with superhuman strength and agility. Maguire explained in an interview with Cinema.com before the movie's release, "...for someone like me who wasn't exactly a fitness freak, it was a chance of a lifetime to work with top trainers in different disciplines to get in great shape. I'm going to try to stay buff as long as I can, but it takes a lot of discipline and staying away from your favorite junk food." The amount of time and effort required to maintain that Spider-Man body would be too much for anyone other than the most dedicated gym rat but the actor was able to get there for the short window of time he needed to for the sake of the movie. Maguire can hardly be blamed for later admitting that he left his grueling training regimen by the wayside when the film was finally done. You're not Superman, you know. <laughs> Tobey Maguire's primary trainer on the Spider-Man movies was celebrity trainer Gregory Jujan Roche of Holistic Fitness. Jujan Roche described his method as focusing on both body and mind for the stars that he trained. It's about getting in touch with yourself, knowing your limitations, knowing how your body works. Of course, the training also ensured that Maguire looked the part, too. Of the famous shirtless shot, Jujan Roche said, I call it the champagne shot. That was day one of shooting. We did all that, and we were like, oh yeah. In a behind-the-scenes clip, Scott Rogers, the co-stunt coordinator on Spider-Man 2, talked about the difficulties of developing Spider-Man's fighting style. He wanted to rely on real fighting techniques without making Spider-Man look like a kung fu or gymnastics expert. The fights really had to have Spider-Man's signature on them. However, because Tobey Maguire wanted to be able to perform as much of Spider-Man's fighting as possible, he needed to familiarize himself with all of the techniques that were combined to create the Spider-Man style. Luckily, he had the help of martial arts expert Stephen Ho, who previously played Donatello in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 The Secret of the Ooze. The former Ninja Turtle had high praise for Maguire's work ethic when it came to his fight training. He was into it as an art form as opposed to just, you know, learning the tricks he had to learn to look good on camera. Bulking up to play Spider-Man meant lifestyle changes for Tobey Maguire that went well beyond simply spending several hours a day in the gym. He needed to completely transform his diet to ensure that he was eating enough calories and getting enough protein to transform his body. Maguire told Howard Stern that while preparing for the role, he had a nutritionist who helped him plan every single one of his meals. He would sometimes eat five times a day just to make sure he was getting enough energy for his workouts to be effective. The superhero diet was even more of a challenge for Maguire than for other actors because he couldn't rely on eating traditional protein sources like chicken and red meat. Maguire became a vegetarian in the mid-90s, and he's never looked back. To keep himself sane during the training process on each of the films, Maguire allowed himself to break away from the intense diet and workout restrictions on a regular basis. The regularly scheduled free days gave Maguire the reprieve he needed to keep his enthusiasm going for months on end. Sam Raimi's first Spider-Man was such a blockbuster success that Sony wanted to get a start on the sequel as quickly as possible. 
That arrangement worked well for everyone, but it had special benefits for Tobey Maguire. The star wasn't shy about admitting that he let his superhero training regimen lapse after filming the first movie. When it came time for Maguire to start hitting the gym for Spider-Man 2, he found that he hadn't entirely lost his touch and was able to tone down his workout plan from the original film. He worked out anywhere between two and four hours while training for the sequel, which was at least an hour less each day compared to his previous schedule. Training for the sequel was less about getting ripped and more about getting back on his feet. Leading up to the production of Spider-Man 2, rumors spread that Tobey Maguire could potentially be replaced by Jake Gyllenhaal because of a serious problem with his back. My back! Oh, my back! After completing the film, Maguire clarified what had happened in an interview with Superhero Hype. Maguire said his lower back condition had been affecting him for several years through Spider-Man all the way until right now, but he could never be certain what would cause the pain to flare up. Maguire was intimidated by the amount of ambitious stunts planned for Spider-Man 2, and he felt that it was his responsibility to disclose his condition to everyone working on the film. Maguire spent two weeks taking it easy on his back and worrying about whether or not he'd be able to take part in the film. During that time, his back started to get better just as rumors of his replacement started to spread. Maguire started to work carefully with the film's stunt coordinators, and by the time filming began, he was shocked by how good he felt. He told Superhero Hype, in actuality, the stunts were easier for me, and my back was fine the whole way through. I don't know what made them better. I was more comfortable in them doing the certain stunts, and the aerial stuff was easier." <laughs> I thought you were sick. I got better. Once Tobey Maguire had settled his concerns about his lower back condition, he wanted to take on as many of the stunts in Spider-Man 2 as possible. He viewed it as his responsibility to be the man behind the mask on screen as much as possible. He told Superhero Hype, there are certain things I have to do and want to do because you're bringing life into a character." He also admitted to taking a certain amount of pride in being able to truly see himself as Spider-Man in the film, saying, quote, "...I like to point stuff in there so you could feel me in there." Maguire's commitment to the role clearly impressed his co-workers, particularly director Sam Raimi, who occasionally had to hold Maguire back and let a stunt double take over in a scene. Sam Raimi said in a behind-the-scenes featurette, "...Toby did a tremendous amount of his own stunts in this picture, as much as..." I would allow him to do. He wanted to do everything." For Spider-Man and Spider-Man 2, Tobey Maguire had to completely transform his body. He lifted weights, tirelessly worked on cardiovascular exercises, and mastered a wide variety of fighting techniques, but years of training still left Maguire unprepared for the most memorable moment in the trilogy's conclusion, the dance scene. The actor told BlackFilm.com all about the new training he underwent for the trilogy's final film. I worked with some people, a choreographer, and a couple of dance people. He had to learn the right moves to bring Peter Parker's symbiote-inspired overconfidence to life, and fans will likely never let him forget it. Maguire explained that, "...the basic idea of it was choreographed, and then we kind of riffed on that and had fun from there." Their fun riffing became the most infamous scene in just about any superhero movie. Maguire may have approached the dance training with the same enthusiasm as his fitness training, but audiences haven't yet appreciated it on the same level. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies and TV shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.